Okay guys, I want to clear something up. There seems to be a lot of misunderstanding out there when it comes to deadlifting world records and understanding the difference between a powerlifting deadlift record and a strongman deadlift record. So Uncle Oz is going to explain all. So first up, let's look at the strongman deadlift. Now what is allowed in a strongman deadlift? Basically, anything goes. You're allowed to use wrist straps, which take the element of grip out of the deadlift. Now obviously strongmen have strong grips and it's tested in other events, but 99% of the time in a strongman contest you're allowed to use the wrist straps. Wrist straps obviously allow you also to be more aggressive in the initial pull off the floor, whereas when you're using your, your grip, your, your hands, you have to pull a little bit more smoothly, otherwise the bar will open up your hands. Now, most strongmen have mastered the use of wrist straps. They allow the athlete to hold the bar into their fingertips. So you watch a lot of the top guys, they allow the bar to kind of roll down into their fingertips, still holding it in the straps. Grip still isn't an issue, but it allows them to start in a higher position, shortening the range of motion and essentially allowing them to lift more weight. Now, as simple as that sounds, it doesn't always work straight away going the other way. So you get a lot of guys that are used to powerlifting style deadlifts, they're holding the bar tightly, and then when they use straps, it actually puts them off because they're not used to starting in that position. A good example was someone like Andy Bolton, one of the absolute best deadlifters of all time, the first man to deadlift a thousand pounds. When he tried to compete in a strongman deadlift competition, he actually found using straps was off-putting to him and he couldn't lift as much weight. So it doesn't necessarily mean using straps you'll lift more, but if you practice and practice and practice doing that movement, you tend to get better at it. Now another thing to point out with strongman deadlifts is that you are allowed to hitch. Now I don't recommend hitching and if you look back at a lot of my videos I've done some terrible hitches in the past but I don't think it's a good habit to get into and you know learning from my mistakes I try and eradicate that from particularly from training these days but when it comes to competition time and it's just about getting it from A to B strongmen are allowed to hitch whereas powerlifters aren't so that's another difference between the two lifts. Now the third difference, big difference between the two sports, in strongman you tend to only have one judge judging from the front, whereas in powerlifting you tend to have three judges, or you do have three judges, so you have two side judges and a front judge, and often you'll see some strongmen get away with either a soft no uh, knee lockout or not pulling their shoulders back, whereas in powerlifting the judging criteria is a lot stricter. They're two separate lifts, and that's the hard thing a lot of people kind of struggle to understand. You have to take them as separate records because there is a different set of rules and criteria to what's expected. Now I might have said that anything goes in strongman, but there is one rule for strongman deadlifts. You're not actually allowed to do a sumo deadlift in strongman. I don't really uh, know why, it's just become a, a rule, it was obviously set a world's strongest man, they decided you have to do a conventional lift. So sumo isn't allowed in strongman. So you may get a lot of great sumo lifters that would struggle to cross over into the strongman style or conventional style of lifting. So we've looked at strongman, let's look at powerlifting now. So powerlifting deadlifts, you have two general classes, raw and equipped. Equipped lifting and powerlifting is where you're allowed to wear a super suit. This is a tight suit that kind of constricts the hips. It gives you a lot of power off the floor in the deadlift doesn't help so much at lockout but it does help protect your hips and you tend to find people can handle more weight and recover quicker from, from big lifts using the super suits but raw lifting has become extremely popular and lifting raw is more impressive in my opinion particularly when it comes to deadlifting than lifting in a power suit. Now also we spoke about the straps that are used in strongman in powerlifting you tend to have two options you have a, um, a hook grip where your fingers wrap around your thumb, extremely painful type of grip, but very effective. And then you have a reverse grip where you have one arm over the top, um, more of a standard pull. Guys like Andy Bolt and Benedict Magnuson chose that. Uh, guys like Yuri Belkin, for instance, he will go for a hook grip. Now the big debate is which is more impressive, powerlifting style deadlifts or strongman style deadlifts. I think both are exceptionally impressive. When you see a guy pull 500 odd kilos, 
you know, guys like Eddie, guys like Thor that have pulled 500, 501 kilos. These lifts are incredible. The amount of strength needed to do what they did is godly. But it doesn't mean they would make the best powerlifting deadlifters. Now, Thor, for instance, has done a powerlifting competition and he pulled 420 kilos. As strong as Eddie is, or, or was, in terms of his deadlifting, his grip would let him down when it comes to pulling in a powerlifting contest. Now, I'm not saying he's not going to pull a huge number. He's definitely going to pull a big number. But I also, I'm not convinced, unless he really spent time focusing on pulling in a powerlifting federation, pulling to strict powerlifting rules, I'm not convinced his strength would just cross over and pull more than anyone else. That being said, the impressive powerlifting deadlifters don't cross over and pull more than the strongman in the strongman type of pull. So you've had Benedict Magnuson, who at one stage, to be fair to the man, had both powerlifting and the strongman world records. Andy Bolton has done both. Obviously, past his prime when he tried the strongman deadlifting, but Andy will admit himself that he struggled with the, the way that we do things in strongman. He liked to be able to stand up right, dive down, grab the bar and rip straight off the floor. Whereas just putting the straps on took him out of his timing, it took him out of his rhythm, and he didn't like that way of lifting. Yuri Belkin is a sumo deadlifter, incredible, incredible lifter, but I don't think he could come over into strongman and lift anywhere near as much as he does in a powerlifting competition. The guys tend to focus on their sport. Strongman, powerlifting. Now, us as fans can enjoy both. There's, uh, I think Benedict Magnuson's 460 kilo deadlift was something special. He did it raw, he did it at the Arnold's a number of years ago now, and it was such an incredible lift, the way he hypes himself up, the way he attacks the bar, to do what he did without any straps. To me, one of the most impressive lifts I've ever seen. But equally impressive is the guys like Thor and the guys like Eddie pulling 500 kilos. But it's important to understand they are two separate lifts. They're two different sports. It's not just one lift. And that's where people make the mistake. They, they see the word deadlift and they think it puts it all into the same bracket. And it really doesn't. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave you with some of my favorite deadlifts of all time. Comment below and let me know your favorites. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time.